since we were making science fiction films about submarines that could go down to enormous depths, rockets that would be fired into space, can you imagine a broadcaster saying, there's great excitement in this country at the moment because the first rocket going to the moon is being launched in Scunthorpe tonight. We used a chemical called um, titanic chloride to make smoke effects. So when the buildings collapse, you splatter titanic chloride liberally and you get all this lovely smoke effect. If you use smoke cartridges, which we did, and the chloride, it manufactured phosgene, which was a First World War poison gas, which we were making on set and breathing. Stanley Kubrick, he was doing 2001, and he wanted us to shoot the special effects because we could do, on a good day, five shots a day. And he couldn't get this because it was taking three months to get five shots at Shepparton. I believe the Andersons turned it down because of their commitments with the puppet films. Jerry had this meeting and said that Lou Gray's decided he wants it to be an hour. So go on to making our pictures and we'll write, rewrite the scripts for the half hour ones. But you were shooting and prepping a new hour show while you were trying to shoot and pick up on half hour shows. Nobody ever really noticed, I don't think, that they weren't an hour show in the first place. <laughs> Didn't Jerry give you a, a feeling that you could do anything? He was so gentle and quiet, you just relaxed was, with him. He was lovely. I remember going to his house in Gerard's Cross. My agent took me there. And um, I, I, the first thing that struck me was this wonderful coral colored carpet. <laughs> and they had toddlers, or he, there was a toddler around at the time. And I thought, I've got toddlers, how do they keep it clean? It was so yeah. magnificent. It was, it was a lovely house with a studio. Yeah. And he was so sweet, he was terribly kind. And of course, when we did, when, when we were going into Scarlet, we had um, a special day when we could invite our children. Oh, did you really? ever take your children? I don't think I had children when I was working. Yes, I did, yes, but I never did, no. No, I didn't. Oh, we had a, it was a lovely, it was a bonanza day and we took the kids there. And I never forget that I, my two, well, they were little, the girls, you know, uh, about four and about seven. And they saw, they were more interested in the wardrobes, of course, of the, of, of the angels. Oh, yes. And of course, Penelope's wardrobe was the thing as well. It oh, was fantastic. You know? Lady Penelope? Yes. You oh. didn't play Lady Penelope? No, no, you? no, but they liked her wardrobe. They were more interested in that than my uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was terribly funny, but they did, they did all the explosions for us. I mean, he set it all up and he was, he was like a sort of Santa Claus, really, you know, uh, a father figure, Santa Claus, getting all these kids in, all saying hello, shaking hands with him. And then they saw the explosions and they were gobsmacked. I am very delighted to have the opportunity to introduce the next film, Thunderbird 6. One, two, three, four, five. Now, International Rescue's latest top secret, Thunderbird 6. Thunderbirds I Go was very serious. Because Thunderbird 6 had much lighter moments in it. We'd had the experience of doing one. So it wasn't necessarily easier, but I thought the script was much lighter. What we tried to do is to give it more action and more fun. The tiger moth particularly was great fun to do. Jerry got this bright idea of saying, why don't we fly it under a motorway bridge? And it had to go at great speed under the bridge and out again. And Joan Hughes was this very, very wonderful woman pilot. The M40 at that time was being built and one section was finished and it was due to open in about three weeks. We had to get permission to do this 
because, you know, they considered it was dangerous and all the rest of it. So the day of the shooting of this, we had all the officials down there. They said, you can't fly the plane under the bridge to Joan, but you can land and taxi under the bridge and then take off again. I said to Joan, all right, well, if we must, we must. And she said, well, if we must, we must. I said, well, anyway, Joan, whatever you do, I'll get it. I've got three cameras on it. And then she comes down, she goes lower and lower. She shot underneath there. They took us to court. Joan's defence was, and it was perfectly right, perfectly true, but they wouldn't take it just as her word, that it was more dangerous to do it the way they wanted, with sort of taxiing underneath the motorway bridge, rather than if she got the speed up to get under the bridge. She couldn't land. The wind would have pushed her, you know, the wrong way, and that was what she was standing by. So um, they accepted that because she, she had, I mean, she'd been a fantastic pilot for years and years. I thoroughly enjoyed working on the film and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Oh well, it was a nice legacy. It was a wonderful mm. legacy, and and I, I I personally like you. I owe him huge amounts. Yeah, we do. We huge do. Huge amounts. We, we do. We really well, do. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, you darling. Jerry. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jerry. We do. We owe him a great deal because, you know, it's isn't it funny? You mentioned something that that Jerry's done, and immediately people recognise it. I mean, you know, you could be. I could be Miss Havisham, but if I've done Captain Scarlet, they know me. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yes, exactly. That's it. Yes, they the man said, in the taxi today, yeah. he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm going to do And he said, Jerry Allen. said, oh. And I, he said, what were you? And I said, Terror Hawks. He, he nearly stopped the cab. <laughs> he knew Zelda. I had to do Zelda in the back of the cab. I know. I had to do my <laughs> in the back of the cab. It was great fun. He said, don't bother with a tip. <laughs>